Hello, we're Simon and John from the Steam Workshop. We've been asked quite a lot about how we make clupit rings um, for pistons on steam engines. So we thought we'd make a video about how we do it, how John does it here at the Steam Workshop. Um, John's going to do the machining and the work to show you how it's done. I'm going to narrate it because John doesn't talk much. I don't talk much. <laughs> but hopefully we'll be able to show you exactly how it's done. Um, it can be done in different ways but this is just the way that we do it. So. Enjoy. So the first stage is to bore the stock cast iron bar down to the internal dimension that you'd like for your clupit ring and slightly oversize on the external dimension as you're gonna you're gonna finish that off later on in the exercise as you'll see. Now if you look closely you'll see there's two vertical lines scored onto the tube and that represents the area that we're not going to cut because we're now cutting um, with the, the cylinder mounted in the rotary table on the miller, we're now cutting the central split down the clupet ring. So John's machining up to the other line and then out it comes. So with the bed raised, it's now for the second cut which will go all the way round to split off your clupet ring and of course with the um, upper of the two cuts there not going all the way around as you can see now um, you'll end up with a double band joined across that central solid strip. So now with a fret saw we're just removing the arc mark made by the cutter because it's obviously a, a round cutter that goes in. So we're just changing that angle to make it square um, with the surface of the glue pit ring at the lines that we've, we've got scored on there. Next it's a case of marking uh, between the two lines the angle that you want the glue pit ring to, to be at. Um, this one's going to be at 45 degrees, but you can make them 90 degrees if you prefer. Here, using a razor saw, John's carefully um, sawing along those lines at 45 degrees um, to effectively split the ring. There you can see it's split through and then flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. So now you've got the basics of your clupit ring, but there's no tension in it. So now for the clever bit. So you do that. Here we're flipping the clupit ring inside out. Um, it's obviously cast iron so it's quite brittle so it's, it's worth taking care at this stage because it is possible to fracture it but, but it's possible to do it as well as you'll see. It does get easier once it's machined. That's it, now show it from end on. So now in this position um, it's quite easy to get at the rough sawn ends so just take a bit of time to clean them up with a file um, so that you've got a nice fitting surface. You can see where the arc, where you can see that arc there, where they come mm -hmm. loose, so just flat that off. Mm-hmm, yep. So that <coughs> side. That corner. Mm-hmm. The ring's then pressed over a slightly oversized mandrel. The, the mandrel should be 1.022 um, times the inside diameter of the clupit ring. Um, and you're then going to heat treat it um, on the brazing hearth just to relax the molecules inside there and, and ease the tension in it. It. 
So that gives you your You'll see now when the when the ring cools that it's no longer tight on the mandrel as John will show you now just by pushing down on the edges you can see it slips down quite easily and that means that there's now the slight oversize in the ring which will mean it will press itself out to the bore that you want it to. And here obviously we're flipping the ring back um, to its correct alignment again turning it back inside out again it is still brittle so this is a stage where you have to be careful but as long as you do it carefully it's perfectly possible to do now you can pull side out and you'll be able to see the spring and it clips shut try to it's really tight yep well that's what we're after so it holds itself together yep it's all right isn't it yeah very good yeah, this is a a ring to width so yep. depth mm -hmm. Then as John was basically saying, we're popping the ring into a widthing mandrel that, that is essentially oversized for the end diameter that you'd like the ring to be, because if you remember at the beginning we left um, an oversized um, surface on the ring so we can machine it down later that you'll see in a minute. So pop it into the mandrel and then face off the, the edge that's, that's, that's facing you to take the width of the ring nearer to what you're after. Here then John's just finishing off the sharp edge with some sandpaper and then popping it out carefully with, with a screwdriver. And then flip it over and pop it back in the mandrel the other way. So you can see where you try to get rid of that step there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was heat treated and flipped over the other way, now when you flip it back into its correct alignment, you see that the saw cut hole is now effectively on the outside, which is what John was showing you there with the ruler. And so it's just a case now of finishing it off to the finished um, width, which in this case is 4.7mm. Okay. Then into another bit of tooling. This time it's what we're calling the closure ring. Essentially it just squashes the ring down to the desired level of closure between the ends and holds it so that you can then put a mandrel in to bolt up and grip the ring. Um, this is also that you can then pop it back in the lathe to turn your final diameter. With it all bolted up, the closure ring should just wiggle and press off the top now. There you go. And we can just do the final process now, which is to machine off the external di diameter to the desired finished um, diameter for the cylinder board. And there you have a finished clue pit ring. You can see that there's plenty of tension in it and the ends close up nicely, ready to go back on the engine. Hopefully that's cleared up some of the mysteries of, of making clue pit rings. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, do like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or have a quick look at our website. And if you need to know anything else, just drop us a line and ask. Um, but otherwise, thanks very much for watching.